Lesson 4, Lectio Quarta. Let's take it up where we left off with the declension of Terra. Nominativus Terra Nostra, Genitivus Terra Nostre, Dativus Terra Nostre, Accusativus Terra Nostra, Ablativus Terra Nostra. So terra, terre, terre, terram, terra. And we have some examples here. Nominativus. Domini est terra et plenitudo eius. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. Domini est terra. Genitivus. Vos estis. You all are. Sal terre. The salt of the earth. Of the earth, terre. Sal terre. In English we use little auxiliary words to express uh, genitivus or dativus. But in Latin, as you see, we don't need the words of the. Because the declension takes care of that. Sal terre means salt of the earth. Dativus, ve terre, quia descendit diabolus ad vos. This is taken from the book of Apocalypse, chapter 12. Woe to the earth. So, to the earth, terre, ve terre, dativus. Accusativus, in principio creavit Deus celum et terram. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Created and the object of creation is terra. Therefore it is put into the casus accusativus. Creavit terram. In principio creavit Deus celum et terram. And ablativus, terra nostra. Eduxi te de terra Egypti. I led you out of the land of Egypt. Out of de terra. Notice that the nominativus and the ablativus have the same form, terra. So you would know the difference out of context. In every language, some words are exactly the same, and out of context, we make a distinction between their meaning. So, eduxi te de terra Egypti. De terra. I led you out of the land of Egypt. But let's stop for a moment and ask ourselves, why are we doing this? What is the purpose of this exercise? Are we going to be... Uh, looking at declensions of nouns for weeks and months to no end. What is the purpose of this entire exercise? You recall that in the beginning I mentioned that if you look at a dictionary entry, for example, for the word pater, pater, patris, the dictionary will give you an indication of the genitive of that particular noun. And that indication tells you which group out of the five possible groups of declensions this particular noun belongs to. If we would look up the word for terra, we would see terra and then the letters AE and then that small letter F meaning it's, a, it's of a feminine gender. The earth is she and the genitive is indicated by the letters AE, meaning terre. As you see, nominativus is terra, genitivus is terre. And once you know that, then you know that it's a reference to this entire system of the first declension, the one we are looking at right now. But as a, as a in order to give us an overview of what, where this is leading and what is the purpose of this entire exercise, 
let's look at uh, a comparison a, of, a f of several nouns that would belong to this first declension. Nouns such as terra, aqua, planta, porta. And you can see that they are all declined in the same fashion. Nominativus, terra, aqua, planta, porta. Genitivus, terre, aque, plante, porte. Dativus, terre, aque, plante, porte. Accusativus, terram, aquam, plantam, portam. Ablativus, terra, aqua, planta, porta. So we can, uh, we should be aware of the fact that once you learn the first declension, then any other noun of that declension will be declined in the same way. And all you have to know and, and learn is the five declensions in order to decline all nouns in the entire language. I don't suggest, I don't recommend memorizing these in such a way that one would just retain uh, the memory of, of a sample noun for each. I think it's better to, yes, to, to be familiar with these, uh, with each one, but then gradually as we run into them over and over in, in various texts, because at some point we are going to look at texts, at lat Latin readings, then we will be, uh, if necessary, going back to the concept, to the declension to which they, anything pertains, and so gradually become familiar with the system, which is a better way to learn this than to just merely mechanically commit to memory um, these uh, exhibits. So I, I hope that we can, as we go along, look at each one with the idea that we become very well acquainted with them and in the process itself, this will become very natural to a point where uh, you will know that terra has the five cases of terra is terra, terre, terre, terra, terra. Let's look at another exhibit which will show us all five declensions in together. The first one is, as we, uh, as we are now talking about, uh, the first one is the one we are now talking about, which is terra. So you see nominativus is terra, terre, terre, terram, terra. Second declension, we could use the uh, word filius, as a sample for that. We could choose any samples, but I am choosing the word, the noun filius, which means son. So the nominativus is, is filius, genitivus filii, dativus filio, accusativus filium, ablativus filio. The third declension we could use as an example the word for father, which is pater, and we did that already in the beginning. So nominativus is pater, genitivus patris, dativus patri, accusativus patrem, ablativus patre. The fourth declension, you could use various words such as textus or spiritus, uh, so let's look at textus, nominativus textus, genitivus textus, dativus textui, accusativus textum, ablativus textu. And the fifth declension, uh, we could use various words such as fides, spes, res, a thing is res. So we have here fides, Genitivus fidei, dativus fidei, accusativus fidem, 
ablativus fide. All of these are in the singular. Then we have the uh, plural uh, to, that we will talk about later. But right now we are just introducing the entire concept of declensions. So we, here we have an overview of all five declensions in the singular. And these, like I said, would cover ev any possible noun that uh, you would encounter in any Latin text. Let's look yet at another example where I have chosen four nouns. Pater, Filius, and Spiritus Sanctus. Notice that nominativus is Pater, Filius, Spiritus, Sanctus. Genitivus is Patris, Filii, Spiritus, Sancti. And that is how we make the sign of the cross. We say, in nomine patris et fili et spiritus sancti. In English we have to say, of the, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But like I said, in Latin we don't need these little auxiliary words because the declension takes care of the, in this case the genitivus takes care of the concept of possession. So, in nomine patris, et fili et spiritus sancti means in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Or we could say, looking at the next line, at the dativus, gloria patri et filio et spiritui sancto. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Again, to the is not needed in Latin because the declension of the, the dativus takes care of that. So it would be Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. Or I could say, I believe in the Father and in the Son and in the Holy Spirit. Credo in Patrem et Filium et Spiritum Sanctum. Again, no need of auxiliary words. So this is by way of looking at declensions in an actual context, in an actual sentence, so that we can see the role that they play in creating sentences and expressing oneself in Latin. So we know from all of this the purpose and the goal of this exercise. So having said this, let's go over the initial example once again, the five declensions, the five cases of terra and various examples for each. Nominativus, Domini est terra et plenitudo eius. The Lord is the earth and its fullness. Genitivus, vos estis sal terre, you all are the salt of the earth, terre. Dativus, ve terre, quia descendit diabolus ad vos. Woe to the earth, because the devil has come down to you. To the earth, terre. Accusativus, in principio creavit Deus celum et terram. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And ablativus, eduxite, I led you out, de terra Egypti, out of the earth, out of the land of Egypt. So, Domini est terra et plenitudo eius. Vos estis sal terre, ve terre, quia descendit diabolus ad vos. In principio creavi Deus celum et terram, eduxite de terra Egypti. So, terra, terre, terre, terram, and terra. 
prima declinatio, the first declension.